Kate, we are live. Yes, we are. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How's it going? Great. Okay. How's it going? Well, going terrific. Here we are. It is. It's Wednesday again. What happens when you accept an offer? Our top story today is contingency time frames. That's right. So now you've accepted your offer and then what starts? The contingency time frames. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. So you know the buyers have rights and sellers have obligations. That's right. Buyers have rights based on the contract. So everything is preloaded in there for the buyers. Buyers have the right to inspect. Buyers have the right to have a certain amount of days to do their inspections. Buyers have rights to do the appraisal. Buyers have rights to basically do anything during the inspection. Sellers have obligations. Sellers are obligated to make the property available to the buyers. Sellers are obligated to the contract. It's really a very lopsided contract during the beginning because buyers have rights, sellers have obligations. Sellers are obligated to the contract, buyers have all the rights to get things done. Well, and it's, we're in California, so our standard California contract is a consumer protection leaning uh, contract. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, you're right, and I think most states do have. Uh, buyers have the rights. I mean, it would be terrible to get into a contract with the seller and they say, you know, you're not going to be able to inspect the property. We're not going to let your appraisal in, your appraiser in to do the appraisal. We're going to just say, no, you're buying it as is and that's it. That really wouldn't be fair to the buyer because the buyer needs to know exactly what they're buying. It's difficult to walk through a house and say, oh, I know exactly what I'm buying because you're not checking the systems. You're not checking everything about the house. You're not under the house. You're not in the attic. You're not on the roof. All those normal things that home inspectors do, some buyers do them themselves. That's right. So during the contingency period, the buyers in California have 17 days to do all their inspections. Um, they have 21 days to get their loan in place and final loan approval, but 17 days to do their home inspection, any secondary inspections like a chimney inspection, electrical, roof, uh, whatever deems uh, necessary. And then once all those, they also have those days to review the disclosures from the seller, any other reports that are generated like HOA documents, CCNRs, things like that. You have 17 days to review all those things. If anything comes up during that time that you as a buyer are not happy with, you can cancel um, at any time and get your deposit back during your inspection period. That's what it's for. So you can inspect, inspect the property and see what you're buying. That is right. That's that. right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it when you say that. You always say, That's right. So, no, that is correct. Normally 17 days, a lot of times especially in these days, uh, buyers are waiving all their inspection periods or contingency periods. They're buying the house as is. Now, that being said, a buyer should still do a home inspection. And if they see anything from the disclosures on the sellers that they didn't know about, maybe a leak in the attic, a hole in the roof that they weren't aware of, now that they are, they should also do those inspections. Even though they've waived all the contingencies, a buyer should do all their inspections. Yes, for sure. And while the inspections part of this contingency period is going on, the buyer is also working on their loans. They're working with their lender. They need to get their lender all current up-to-date documents and all the things the lenders need to get your loan so they can submit it to underwriting, uh, the order the appraisal, get the appraisal back, and so that in 21 days, hopefully, you have final loan approval from the lender. Now, I have yet recently to have one be uh, approved in 21 days. The lenders seem to be backed up uh, with refis and just the crazy year it's been. That have we? I don't think we've had one close on time um, lately, unless it's been a cash deal. So the lenders are doing their best, uh, but don't uh, count on the days on the contract just because it's in black and white. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's right. See, that's right. <laughs> now, generally speaking, <laughs> when the contract gets accepted, everybody always says, yes, no problem. We can get that done all 21 days. Are you kidding me? That's plenty of time to get all this done. It just seems to never work out that way. Now, like 
Lisa was saying that lenders and the loan processors and the underwriters, they're all backed up with refinances, purchase money loans. There's just all kinds of things going on right now in the real estate market where everybody's trying to take advantage of the low rates. That's right. Now, during this uh, uh, inspection contingency loan contingency period, uh, you may find some things that you want to ask the seller to repair, do a re formal request for repair, or ask for credits from the seller. So this, all that negotiation takes place here too during our 17 and 21 day um, inspection timeframes. And if for whatever reason you can't come to an agreement during that time for credits or repairs, the buyer can cancel and get their deposit back. So again, the buyers um, have this time to do that and time to negotiate again. Of course they do. And that is called a request for repairs. So it's not a demand for repairs. However, it can turn into one if they find something dramatically wrong with the property. And sometimes sellers don't know. They haven't done home inspection or haven't been actively looking for problems in the house. If the house is operating correctly, well, why do you go look for problems? So they would do a request for repair, say, hey, we would like the hole in the roof replaced. I know you didn't know about it. Uh, replaced or repaired. Uh, yeah, replaced is a little different story. <laughs> we just did one of those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, it needs a new roof. Oh my gosh, who's going to pay for that? Well, somebody ended up paying for that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you do a request for repairs, the seller has a time to respond, and then that's where the negotiations start on that part of it. Now, if you bought the property as is, that doesn't mean you can't ask for a request for repairs. However, the seller's not obligated either way, whether you've released that and buying it as is, or you still have your contingencies in place, the seller is not obligated to fix what you find wrong with the property. That's where the negotiation starts. That's right. So there's another situation where for some reason, whatever re reason the buyer cannot get their loan, um, things change, circumstances change, or whatever happened, again, the buyer can cancel and get their deposit back. Now, in California, we do have an active contract, which means the contingency period just doesn't go automatically away. So at the end of 17 days, oh, it's over, it's gone. No, the buyer has to participate in that and sign a release of contingencies. That's not always the way in other areas where it's a passive contingency release, where if you don't do anything, that contingency automatically goes away at the predetermined time date. That's right. Now, for some reason, your property does not appraise or the property does not appraise for the contract price, the bank will only loan on the, the amount of the appraisal on the contract, um, whatever comes back on the appraisal. So whether it's the contract price or not, the bank will only loan on the appraised value. So what does that mean? It means if it comes in less than contract price, then the buyer needs to come in with cash to make that deal. Or again, we're back to negotiating with the seller. So the seller either needs to come down on their price, the buyer needs to bring cash in, um, or again, the buyer can cancel and get their deposit back. <laughs> of course, so let's say you have a million dollar property, the appraisal comes in at 950. Well, the bank's gonna loan their money from the 950 number. So if you've got a 20% pre-approved loan, 20% down payment with a pre-approved loan, they're going to use 20% of the 950 instead of the million. So what would that mean to a buyer? That means they're going to have to come up with the additional 50,000 to bring it up to the contract price or purchase price of the property of one million dollars. Yes. So that's uh, sounds simple, do, uh, doesn't it? All these areas, you know, you think that once you accept an offer, that that's kind of it. Nope, that's really just the beginning. <laughs> it is the beginning in. These days, in today's market, most buyers are waiving the contingency period, waiving the appraisals, they're waiving everything. So the 17 days or 10 days or 21 days really doesn't matter, but the mechanics of the deal do still matter. So the bank's still gonna want 20% down on the appraised price, and that means you're gonna have to come up with a difference if it doesn't appraise. Occasionally now, they do come in above appraisal. Very rare. Very rare. 
Um, because the market's been moving so fast and prices have moved up so fast, we're finding the opposite problem in the market right now. You just never know if the appraisal is going to come in or not because things are closing so much higher than the last closed comp that uh, it just depends what's moving in that neighborhood at that moment, what, what, whether the current appraisal is going to come in. Yeah, it works like this. So you have the house next door for sale and you're for sale. The house next door goes into escrow first. We hope it closes before the appraiser comes out to do the appraisal on the property because as soon as it closes, that's a closed comp and then that moves the whole neighborhood upward these days. Yeah, the appraiser, when they come to the property, they can only use closed comparables from the date of the appraisal. So you always, if you have it, something tight that's real tight, you would try and push it and wait till that comp in the neighborhood closes and then have the appraiser come. <laughs> It makes things much simpler. Uh -huh. Now that's not the way it always works. Usually if both houses are for sale, both houses get multiple offers, both houses usually close about the same time. Then the whole neighborhood comes up, but it's usually the buyers that bear the brunt of moving the neighborhood up with the closed comparables. So there are just the main points here to sum it up on the negotiating points that, you know, it's really important that when you're choosing a realtor, you choose someone with experience that sells more the average realtor in California sells six deals a year. Well, would you want to be having surgery with a doctor that only did six surgeries a year? Probably not. So it's really important um, to get a really strong negotiator with a lot of experience because we're going to negotiate right from the beginning, from the listing agreement to the offers, multiple offers, multiple counter offers, the inspections, the appraisal, uh, all of the points all the way through the deal becomes a consistent negotiation, negotiating the credits, repairs, etc. Everything is negotiable in real estate, no matter where you're at, no matter, it doesn't matter, you're probably anywhere in the world, but it definitely in the United States, if it's real estate, it's negotiable. That's right. Another little fun fact I pulled out is one in nine realtors in the United States is in California. Woohoo! <laughs> well, we're the most popular state, one in nine. That's, that's a lot. I thought that was very high. Yeah, so they used to say, well, if you've got your driver's license, you've got your real estate license in California. That's what it feels like so, uh, so, uh, sometimes, but you know how some pe people drive. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so be sure to pick some experience. We love to talk about real estate. It is definitely a seller's market. We are looking for inventory. So if you know anyone thinking about selling a property, now is the time. Exactly right. GaryLisa.com. <laughs> Your real estate edge. I'm Lisa. And I'm Gary. And we'd love to meet you soon.